So as we look around in the Madison Valley and look at all this open land and these ranches which dot the landscape, it, it looks like a pretty empty and lonely place. I think that ranches are very deceptive in that you look at them and you see a lot of land and a lot of cattle, but what you don't see is everything else that depends on this landscape. I think responsible ranching is making sure, and it's very difficult to do, that you take as good a care as your land and your environment as you possibly can so that those other things that depend on this environment thrive. This was my grandfather's ranch, and he worked very hard to take the best care of it he could. But in the 1950s, I think it was uh, the thinking of the day that making wet areas drier would be a good thing for ranching operations. That wasn't just here, that was everywhere. So in the 1950s, my grandfather excavated drainage canals into miles and miles of our river bottom land to try to dry it up. At any given time in history, you do what you do based on the best knowledge and information that's available to you at the time. So why was it a mistake? Well, it was a mistake because we now know that wetlands are very important. Wetlands are actually very rare. They make up only less than 2% of the landscape in the Rocky Mountain West, and yet they're used by 90% of all living species for either their complete life cycle or a part of their life cycle. They're also important to humans because they store water, they clean water, and they're, they're essential for biodiversity. And when I started to see that the draining that was done in the 1950s had ultimately produced some unwanted consequences and was a, a negative for the ranch, I began to consider uh, what could be done to turn that around. So in 2005, we began a project closing a certain amount of drainage canal and restoring a completely extinct stream channel. Restoration is a multidiscipline process, and it requires computer scientists and biologists and engineers and hydrologists, and there's a lot of risk-taking involved. You know, people can draw pictures on paper and show you what this is going to look like, and, but you don't know until you're done. You don't know until two, three years go by when you start seeing the vegetation uh, come back and, and the place start to look natural again. I looked at this on a daily basis, and there was one day where uh, it was a it was an early winter day. I went down there, and there was steam coming off the water, but the water was very off color. It was almost chocolate brown, and I was used to seeing this gin clear water flowing through. And I had a moment of panic, and I thought, "Oh my God, the project is failing!" And then I realized, "Wait a minute, fish are spawning." So within a couple of months, there were fish spawning in a channel that hadn't been there a year ago. It's been a long, complicated, and demanding process, but uh, without hesitation, I feel the Odell Creek Restoration Project has been a gigantic success. I've really enjoyed coming down here almost on a daily basis at all times of the year to see what's going on because it's a dynamic process, this restoration, this change from a, a formerly heavily grazed, drained area to now an area that's wet 365 days a year. And uh, we've already identified over 200 wetland plant species, which in turn attract all kinds of interesting wildlife and birds. Just yesterday, we saw tundra swans arriving on their migration. So they'll stop off in here, use the area for a little while, and then move on. Essentially, tributaries like Odell Creek are sort of lifelines for the river themselves. 
The river is subject to warming when it gets very hot in the summertime. It can also freeze solid in the wintertime. Odell Creek does neither of those things. So it's essentially a, a refugia. When the river freezes or when the river gets too hot, it provides a place for fish to go that is more comfortable and sustaining to them. It's not only been a success environmentally, but it's been a success in finding a way to blend a working ranch with a large conservation project. The Granger Ranches is a cow-calf operation running about 400 mother cows. Uh, of course, we have to raise hay to feed those cows. We have to have good quality rangeland to pasture those cows. And by restoring the wetlands, we've also restored the hydrology of our floodplain pastures, which has made them more productive. So although we've delineated and restrict grazing in the most sensitive areas, we're producing more forage outside of that than what we did before the restoration. But there's also a benefit to the public at large because clean water, good wildlife and fish habitat preserving plant species. These are all things that are very important. Our local economy and the economy in the state of Montana and throughout the West is largely dependent on recreation, tourism, and wildlife. We have a responsibility not only to ourselves, but to the community to be good stewards of all of those things. Ranching, conservation, ecological restoration, these things are not diametrically opposed. In fact, they go very well together. And I think the 10 years that we've spent on this project demonstrate that and provide an opportunity for other ranchers, other landowners to look at this and try to think about ways that they might be able to do something similar.